Hello and welcome. We're glad that you're able to join us for our community prayer time today. We haven't gathered in our Dayspring Chapel for almost a year now, yet we continue to pray together from different places. We have now begun the liturgical season of Epiphany, which celebrates the revelation of God among us. And as we enter these dark, cold months of winter and social distancing, we are aware of our need for connection and for comfort. These months, we are inspired to keep our eyes on the star of Bethlehem and by extension on the sources of light in our lives. We are invited to quiet our hearts as we pray for God's light to shine into the darkest corners of our world, immersed in a spirit of hope. We traditionally begin our gatherings by remembering members of our community, our family and friends, who are no longer with us, but continue to be present with us as our community of saints. Now, I invite you to take a moment to allow the bell to call us to prayer. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine around the world. I'm gonna let it shine. Oh yeah, let it shine around the world. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine around the world. I'm gonna let it shine. 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 Let it shine out where it's dark. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine out where it's dark. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine out where it's dark. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine, oh, everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, 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 let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it
desiring that. But the plant has another part of the cell, which is below the little green leaves looking to, to the light. And those are the roots in the soil here. I'm sure a lot of you have house plants or gardens and you know that underneath the green light seeking part are the roots. And if we take the roots out of the pot, that's not gonna be good for the plant either. The roots need the dark. So half the plant needs light, half the plant needs dark. Um, so uh, yeah, those um, verses that we, that we heard uh, also talk about that in the psalm. The psalm is all about being known, being known by God, being known by our communities, by our people. And at the end, it says that the light and the darkness are the same. Um, and yeah, that just, it, it just spoke to me that like the plant, we also need that we also need light and darkness in some kind of balance. Um, and someone once said to me that we as human beings are basically houseplants with complicated emotions. I don't know if that's true or not, but um, the plant certainly uh, can teach us a little bit about that. Um, excuse me, Joanne. Yeah, I'm Courtney. Hi. Hi, Courtney. Hi. I can't see I you, but I can hear you. I'm right here. Right here, mm -hmm. top screen. Okay. Um, I just have a quick question for you. Sure. Um, how much water does a plant actually need? Because some people overwater it and then it dies. Mm -hmm. That's so true. How much water does a plant actually need? Well, this plant is a fuchsia and it needs to be watered about two or three times a week. But when I was in high school, I had a summer job at a greenhouse where my mom worked and they grew a lot of cacti, which are from the desert. Um, the owner liked to call himself the cactus king of Canada. And if we had watered those cacti, those cactuses two or three times a week, that would have been it. They only needed water maybe twice a month. So it's uh, plants all have individual needs, just like we as people have individual needs, Courtney. Does that answer your question? Does that make uh, sense? Absolutely, okay. because we have a garden in behind the woodery that I help out with doing gardening. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that garden. It's always looking good. Yeah, you're doing good work there, Courtney. So, um, yeah, uh, nor in, in usual years, um, I'm part of the Larsh Day program. Um, we have a craft studio, an art studio, but this past year things are a little different and I am sure that a lot of your day program people are also spread around in various homes and one real gift to me in the pandemic has been to spend some time with Sandy and Cynthia and Janice in their bungalow home um, and we did some reflecting on light and dark in community last week and uh, we uh, ended up taking some little videos, which Claire is going to sh uh, share with us. Daybreak. My name is Cynthia, and I'm from Large Hamilton. I'm Janice from Large Hamilton. Uh, we need darkness, darkness for sleeping and resting. We need darkness for the for and light for growing the plants. We we for for prevent we need. we find lightness from going outside with the sun. We light. We need light when we meet other people. Um, uh, thanks, ladies, for um, your your reflections and your wisdom on the light and the dark. 
Um, just one thing I wanted to uh, share a little bit more about is Sandy's first reflection. I don't know if you remember, she put up a photo and the photo was of one of our community members named Ross. And we had some real darkness in December. We lost Ross um, on December 22nd, one of the darkest days of the year. And nobody saw this coming. And that time of darkness in the sky was seemed really appropriate, really healthy for us um, because we needed darkness to process our shock and our loss. And then we also needed the light and the hope of the advent candles. Sandy also showed you a candle mold where she's uh, putting in some wax. And I think a lot of people at daybreak know about candle making too, right? It's yeah. a tradition of the region. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so when we lost Ross, that was a lot of light and a lot of dark all at the same time, kind of mixed up for us. Um, and in the last month, Joanne. month and a half or so, I've thought about Ross. And Ross was someone who knew a lot about both light and darkness in life. Most of have a lot of both, right? Like sometimes things are really light and bright and other times not so much. And one way that, that Ross worked through um, and with his times of light and his, and his times of darkness was with his art. Um, and I just wanna finish off today by sharing with you two of Ross's paintings that I've taken down from walls in my home here. Um, the first one I think you can see is a crow. Ross loved birds. He learned to love birds from Jeff Gilbreth. I think a lot of you know Jeff. Um, and there's a lot of uh, uh, shadow and darkness in the crow itself. But also here at the bottom, I love the little nest. And right in the middle is an egg. And the lighting's not so good in here, but you can um, you might be able to see that the egg glows a little bit and inside of the egg we know there's a little bit of new life coming as well right and that new life needs darkness in the middle of that egg to be able to grow and then Ross has also put like little white highlights little bits of light all around the crow and the egg um, so lots of uh, balance of light and dark there that Ross is showing us and then this is one of my favorite paintings. Um, Ross made this for me when I had an office in Large Hamilton and I don't have an office anymore. Somebody else has that office. Um, but when Ross first came to, to Large Hamilton, he felt I needed some protection in my office. So he made me an office angel. And you can see that the office angel has a lot of lightness in, in his gown and his wings, his halo glows, but there's also like the dark lines through his wings. So once again, Ross is um, showing us a little bit about the balance of light and dark in our lives. So that's about it for me. Uh, Sandy and Cynthia and Janice are over there on another screen and um, I don't know if ladies, if you have anything to add, if you want to unmute and share anything further. Uh, Joanne. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, I just, I just wanted to say is that, um, when you're talking about light and darkness, it's actually yeah. representing in painting of, uh,
Thank you. Okay. Our Father, Lord in heaven. heaven, how will it be thy name? Will we be done on earth is it in heaven? Give our daily bread, give us our passes, he chose to gift us, is not Christian, is from evil. For those in the kingdom, power of our Lord, never, never, amen. There's a dark and a troubled side of life There's a bright and a sunny side too Though we meet with the darkness and strife The sunny side we also may view Alright now Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side of life. It will help us every day. It will brighten all the way. If we keep on the sunny side of life. Though the storm and its fury break today. Crushing hopes that we cherish so dear Clouds and storms will in time pass away The sun again will shine bright and clear All right, now, here we go Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side Keep on the sunny side of life help us every day and it will brighten all the way if we keep on the sunny side of life we'll keep on the sunny side always on the sunny side keep on the sunny side of life oh it will help us every day and it will brighten all the way if we keep on side of life if we keep on sunny side of life yes if we keep on sunny side of life you have a good day now everybody Bye. 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 everybody Bye, everyone. Bye bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.